is a little dizzy I come up with. And everything you're hearing right there is a nice combination. the lovely drum machine, Hexel and Pigments. So literally it and a couple of loops from some of our 303 day packs which we will be talking about in due course. So beautiful stuff. So let's get into it shall we. I'm going to just put drum machine away for a moment because I'm going to talk about what I've done here. I'm going to kick things off by talking about drum machine and the grooves and everything else which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, but what I've got going here is a really good example just how flexible drum machine really is because I've actually got it split over a number of different individual audio channels as you can probably see here as I scroll across. So I've got a group going in Ableton which has drum machine in its entirety here as a plugin. I've then got various different buses if you will or direct output as they're called and I've also got a little bit of processing on the actual group channel itself. So we'll talk about that in due course because what's actually happening here is that I've got each individual drum sound rooted to its own channel and that can be incredibly useful for mixing for getting sounds to be exactly where you want them to be be able to add ableton's effects third-party plugins and i'll take you through that as the the session goes on so to just explain drum machine if you've not seen it before i am seriously impressed by this thing i've been using it for a little while now and what it strikes me as is like a cleaner quicker simpler version of something like battery for example, which is a fantastic plugin. I absolutely love battery as well. But this thing really just allows you to get stuff going really, really quickly. And the initial loop that you've heard, this sequence comes from one of the drum machine packs that we are doing for 303 day. It's a dub techno kit and I've sped it up a little bit to 130 beats per minute because, well, you know, it's Friday, it's 303 day. And let's face it, it's the weekend, so we can, uh, you know, not mess about, shall we say, in terms of uh, getting the weekend kicked off right. And you've got, again, you've got your 16 sounds here, 16 pads, really beautifully put together sounds. And you've got a tremendous amount of control here. So what I'm going to show you here now is a complete breakdown of, of how you can work with drum machine to get some really incredible techno vibes going like very very quickly you know you don't need to start from a blank slate anymore you've got these amazing really really inspiring kits to get you off in the right direction as soon as humanly possible so what i'm going to do is because we're going to spend a little bit of time in drum machine here i'm just going to make the actual plugin quite large so you can see it a little bit better so each individual sound has its own real raft of features essentially and you've got various different aspects like again filtering eq compressions filter you can obviously add drive you've got a phaser and you've got the ability to obviously pan change velocity all of that good stuff one of the more innovative things that we'll get to in a, in a short while when we get to the right sound that we're talking about here is the ability to create something called splits. So what you can actually do this is very unique. This is actually something I've only seen on a very high-end mixing plugin called Split EQ by Eventide. This is the only other application of this kind of approach that I've seen. It's very innovative to have it in a drum machine. It's very forward thinking. The ability to split the transient and the body of a sample up and be able to give them individual outs essentially so you can treat them in slightly different ways. So you've got more control. You can get the, the transients of a sound to come out more. You can you know suppress the transients a little bit more. You could add effects to that transient that doesn't affect the rest of the sound and i've got a, an example of how that works as we kind of go through here so all very great very neat tidy standard stuff 
very very easy to you know understand right from the off and obviously you've got other elements here such as the ability to change the envelope of a sound like it is on this snare here you've got the ability to tune so i've retuned some of these sounds to make what i've got going on with pigments and hexel which is adsr's amazing a generative MIDI sequencer that will go into it in a, in a short while to really blend with what I've got going with that combination of Hexel and pigments. So you've got obviously the tuning and then you have this really quite nicely featured sequencer. And I've got a like a two bar loop going on here, which is one of the inbuilt patterns. And you can see you've actually got 16 patterns across here and we're going to interact with them in a number of different ways which i'm kind of going to take you through and this sequencer is again very simple to look at but deceptively very nicely featured you know things that i work with a lot in production work like you know working with grooves and swing and stuff like that whether it be techno melodic techno progressive house organic house you know even off towards ambience and more film score stuff which is you know what i'm mostly known for as a producer it's amazing how immediate it is to get this get this all within one nice little template and again the actual pattern here 32 steps one of the things i really like here actually is you can go into the settings here for drum machine and you can go into ui and one of the things you can do is click here and say i want to have two bars per page because i do like to work with longer sequences and it's quite nice to be able to work in that regard and see things a little bit more exploded out and there's just little things that i really really think are quite smart like say for example we've got this snare sound here which actually, as you can see, I'm not really using, so we'll add that to the pattern now. And, you know, I can kind of dot these in. Obviously, I can play them on MIDI notes as well through a, a MIDI controller or, you know, a pad-based thing, like, say, for example, a machine or a push, both of which I've got in front of me right now. And you've got this really lovely way of just being able to access things very quickly, like swing and doing kind of some more innovative stuff, like I said, like directionality, which is quite cool. So we'll, sh you know, we'll have a, look, a little look at that now and we'll add some snares to this now. noticed on this little step here you've got like a really interesting little sort of flamming going on if we listen to that in isolation i can kind of just solo it from here. yeah that little brup going on there and we can flip into this single pad mode and you can see here you've actually got the ability to program fills so here say for example i've got a, a dual sort of double up essentially and I could do a three. And you get that kind of like brrrp kind of going on. You could do fours. And we start getting really like machine gunny and quite interesting. And you can do these really interesting elements. So fills are entirely possible. And something we can look at in the context of maybe doing like some rolls and stuff a little bit later on on different pads. And again, I can change the velocity from here as well. So I can get a little bit of variation going on. Blending it into velocity. I've actually done that is change the direction of the pattern so if we move back you're going to see something quite interesting happen you're going to see the playhead roll from left to right but then you're going to see the direction of this snare pattern actually move in the opposite direction <laughs> And then 
I can gather it and put it in the right direction again. So you can get these really interesting elements going where you can almost do a, a certain amount of polyrhythmical elements where things are kind of like moving in slightly different directions, giving you slightly different looks, the whole nine yards. Very, very nice indeed. And then when we start to look at the whole pattern, then we've got something really, really interesting with, again, the pattern selector here at the bottom, if you will. And what's really cool about this, and this, again, is one of these really deceptive things, which it looks like, you know, like the old advert said, it does what it says on the tin. But there's a lot more to it. So what I mean by that is, you know, maybe you like this sequencer and the fact that I can just tweak the swing to 5% very easily and I can do these rolls and fills and stuff. But maybe you want to just go into your regular DAW's editor. It's absolutely no problem at all. Because one of the things you can do, so let's drag this off to the side, I can drag this pattern straight in and there you go. You can tuck that away for a second we can fold that up and there is your drum machine pattern very nice and neatly tucked into a nice sequence within ableton which then means you could duplicate that to four bars eight bars i actually when i really get into production mode i really like to work with eight bar loops because it just gives me a lot more opportunity to become a lot more nuanced give little detail changes and little evolutions and variations through a phrase like this at this length and techno like this the more propulsive rhythmic techno shall we say you know i always say to the artists that i coach that you know the drums in techno is the music because you've got all of these different calls of responses going off and you know it's the small little details that really help to take a techno production like this to the next level i very deliberately went in the more funky direction because you know frankly i think we need to bring a bit more funk back into techno but that's just me you know you might disagree but ultimately it's a it's a beautiful thing so ultimately we can dance between all these different patterns because we've got 16 of them and one of the things we can do is just flip between them. Three. And we could spend the next 10 minutes going through them. And they're all awesome. They're all great. And you've got these 16 variations Pair kit within the drum machine architecture absolutely fantastic so there's a few different ways that you can interact with the drum machine pads number one is do exactly what we've just done which is to take the pattern drag it drop it into the daw and sequence it as much as we like now there's another one which i've been having a huge amount of fun with and actually is fairly simple now over here on the bottom right, you've got this mode here called Sync, and it's currently set to Pattern. So this governs how we switch between patterns. And what we've got it set to is Pattern and Retrigger. Now, what does this mean? Well, what it means is that if we just jump out here and jump to this blank MIDI clip that doesn't look like it's doing anything, it looks like a dummy clip, right? I've got these two MIDI notes in. Now, they look fairly nondescript, right? Now, the interesting thing here is that from C minus 2, right at the very, very, very bottom of the MIDI keyboard, for 16 notes above C minus 2, you've actually got what you would call key switches. Now, again, I've done a lot of work in film scoring and stuff like that, and key switches are something that we use quite regularly to make orchestral samples and orchestral instruments in, say, stuff like contact, more, you know, more interesting, a little more, shall we say, lifelike, a bit more human, right? We can change between a long sound and a short sound, all at the tap of a MIDI key switch. This is a key switch workflow, which is really, really nice. And actually, it goes really beautifully from pattern to pattern. So one of the things we can do is just have it live on the actual drum machine 
channel and then we can switch between these two so what you can see i've got pattern one c minus two here right at the bottom playing for six out of the eight bars and then i've got it swap into a whole other pattern between bar seven and eight so it can be really useful to do this if you want to put in little breaks and stuff like that and one of the things that i really love about this drum machine in particular is that these key switches are super useful for playing live so not only does drum machine really work quite well in the context of a studio based production like this one it also works really great on stage because you can just flip between different patterns while you're playing live on stage and all of a sudden very quickly you're into a whole realm of possibility and complexity and you know a whole ease of use that you wouldn't have previously so anyway let's play this and you'll get a really good example of what i mean and i'm going to bring up the plug-in again and we're just going to swap it over there and we're going to hit this exactly how we've heard it before there we go and you'll see it swap there you go between pattern 10 back to one and you'll notice that it didn't, it was still on like pattern four where we left it at the beginning. And it's because it, it, it needs to register the keystroke first. Okay. So very, very nice stuff. So again, like you can spend all the time you want, like working with these kits or building from the blocks that these kits give you in drum machine to, you know, create all these elaborate sequences and then very quickly hot swap between them very very nice workflow i've had an absolute ball working with this and to be honest with you i kind of lost a whole afternoon a couple of days ago just swapping between patterns you know we looked up and the sun had gone down so you know <laughs> really really fun stuff and then when the rubber really hits the road when you want to take this into being a bit more of a serious production is the fact that you can move over to the mixer so the mixer here is quite serious quite chunky right it's got like a lot of options each individual sound has got its own set of outputs and i say set of outputs because this is where the split feature that i mentioned before is quite useful uh, so as you can see here i've got a couple of sends and i've got these on channels here which i've got a delay and i've got a reverb and essentially i've got the ability to have both on both channels but i've got one send one set specifically to a delay send two specifically to a reverb and that makes things really nice because then i can kind of do this onboard effecting and then obviously in its normal state drum machine will sum everything to the main out and the main out is what you would hear etc etc however as we know, different drum sounds need different, you know, different treatments. You know, we want to EQ our, our snares maybe or our claps or our hi-hats a little bit differently from, say, a kick or, you know, a, a bass sample that we might have in Drum Machine. So it becomes really useful to be able to get hold of them uh, in terms of, you know, again, being able to put our own plugins on, whether we want to use in-house stuff within Ableton or we want to go a little bit more in depth with other plugins like you know fab filter pro q3 or you know various compressors that you might want to use so ultimately it's it's a really really nice workflow because what you can do here very simply is that you can go to the routine menu here and you've got very very clear options and one of the things that i've done here is this first option you've got four buses so you can route things to various buses and then treat them as groups individually. Because one of the things before we do that, if we actually look at a sound, if we move over, if we go to bus one, you've got the ability to add like bus compression, bus distortion, bus filtering. It just gives you an extra layer of control. Now I'm not using it in this situation because I chose to go down a slightly different route workflow wise. There's nothing stopping you taking these out of various different direct outputs and you've got 16 outputs essentially outside of the main ones so 
what I've decided to do here, and you can see each each note or each pad, I should say, has got its own output or own set of outputs. And I simply went to root in, and I clicked on root pads to direct out. So again, that's just spread everything over the 16 outputs of drum machine. And that means if we pop out of here for a second, I've been able to create this absolutely monster group <laughs> where I've actually got, if I just put the returns away for a second so we can see it a bit better and this, I've actually got, again, these beautiful sets of channels. So if I was to, again, just solo this and you can actually see I've got the main drum machine channel completely muted. So actually, you're not hearing the main outs. What you've been hearing for the entirety of this live stream so far is the individual direct outs. So we'll go through them. So you've got your kick clearly going through channel seven. So if we listen to that on its own, it's a really meaty techno kick and I was just doing a little bit of EQing on it. And I've added a drum bus. So this is what I mean. So once you've got the pads going through the direct out, you've got the ability to then individually treat them. I can put drum bus, I can compress it, I can put some EQ, I can do whatever I want. I can level it, pan it, send, return. It's effectively like having an individual channel for the sound because it is. The sequencing of that all happens within the drum machine channel. And again, you've got that flexibility of using either the key switches or the MIDI, and you've got none of the worries of, you know, all, all of these these drum sounds, excuse me, are going through individual, are going through like the same two channels. They're not, they're going through everything here. And yeah, it takes a little setup, it takes a couple of minutes to do, but what we'll get to at the moment, in a, in a moment, I should say, is how we can actually make that super simple for ourselves. So the kick sounding great, you know, we'll play the rest of that. And you actually hear what's actually going through the the main outs here is just like the returns. So you're, you, what you're hearing there is the delay and the reverb, basically. And you could choose to just drop a little EQ on that and just take some of that low-end rumble away. Now you get a kick through there because that's the shift between one pattern and the other and it's a slightly different kick on a different sample. So you could actually reroute that. So it works for us actually to take a little bit of that low end off so it's more of a fill basically. So quite nice. So you can see like how it works and it's quite a cool thing. So yeah. So nice clap there. And again, I've just taken some nice low end off there, added a bit of high pass, or sorry, I should say high shelving. Maybe I'll just take a little bit of the extreme top end off there, just to give the kick, uh, the clap, I should say, loads of crunch. And again, a really nice, this is a good example. Really cool, classic 909 style open heart. And one of the things I really love to do with stuff like this is I like to add this delay. So I have three sixteenth notes delay on one side, on a stereo delay, uncoupled, one sixteenth on the other. Uh, have it in ping pong mode and be able to have a little bit of feedback, about 33%, about 18% here. I could probably drop that to about 25 push that to about 25 It's normally 25 and 25 each side that I do there. A little bit of a filter. And you get this lovely, and if you take it off ping pong, you get that lovely little run, and you get lots and lots of momentum. So if I was to play that from the beginning with the whole sequence. I take that off. It almost converts a 909 open hi-hat into like a real nice kind of shaker or like that kind of a more 16th note kind of sound. That is a really nice tip and you can actually just automate that dry wet. Really nice. Again, the snare, 
which we've not done anything to, so I probably want to do a little bit of EQ into that if we had a bit more time. Lovely little clicky sound there. And some of these sounds towards the end I really like. So that's a really nice kind of musical kind of sound if we head back in. And if we look at the... There we go. In fact, I'm going to stop that key switch. Let's remove that out. Nice stab. And then we can go to the effects. Maybe we go back to the sound and effects. And then... found that works the best with our pigment line which we're going to get to looking at in a moment so again just retune things based on where i'm at in terms of an idea for a production so again these are more musical sounds and again this one was kind of heavily tuned as well and this one's a really interesting one as i mentioned before because i've activated the split on this so I've actually got slightly different outputs for the, the, the transient of the stab sound and then the body. So why that is a really interesting thing is that I can decide in the mixer. And if we just get to this channel, which is this one, you'll actually see there's two channels. So one is for the transient. So if we were to like listen to that in solo... I think that was just... Yeah, here we go. Let me just mute that. You can just hear that. Bup, bup, bup. It's more like a pluck. But what I can do is I can decide to send different aspects. So say, for example, if I wanted to pull that send down here and pull this to the delay, and if we listen to that, you would actually get... A little bit more of like. Yep. You can just hear that delay in the background. But it's not taking the body with it, which is quite a useful thing. So, again, if we were to. You can hear that body, and I've put a filter on there. some reverb and just the range of tonal possibilities you get from having that split between transient and body and being able to you know process them slightly differently it's absolutely wild again very innovative, not something I've seen on a lot of other plugins, especially not in this context for drums. Really, really cool. So you've got all of this flair and technique and possibility. And it's just so simple. It's just a really, really beautiful, really simple, really nicely put together plugin. Really nice and elegant to look at. And again, you've got the ability to you know, search for a particular sound. You can dial through the current folder that you're in. You can hit this dice icon so you get a random sound. So if you're running a little bit low on inspiration, you can hit this and hope to, you know, get something going. Again, this is where you introduce an element of, you know, again, rolling the dice, maybe a happy accident happens, all good stuff. And again, we can hit the browser here at the top for the entire kit. And we're actually in our 303 day you know the ultimate techno for drum machine in our bank so it's one of the banks from this so what we'll do is towards the end once we you know get a little bit of time we'll go through in a clean instance one or two of the kits from here and we'll be able to look at the sample packs as well so to finish up on drum machine because to be honest with you and you're probably getting this impression 
I could talk about Drum Machine for hours on end. Like, I am a very big fan of this, actually. Like, I'm, I'm really genuinely really, really into this. And what I've done is I've saved this because, again, if you look at each individual channel, I've had to change the audio from and then set the monitor to in on each individual channel. And it can be, you know, it's you've got to, you know, go to each individual thing. So you've got the, you know, the again, the, the main outs here. And I've got out to, again, you get two through 16 here. And I've had to kind of map each individual channel. Now, to be honest, I don't really want to do that every time I use Drum Machine. So what I did was quite simple. What I can do is I can take this entire channel. And what I've got in my, my library here, I've got various different things like drums and you know, bass, and, like, these are all my custom presets, essentially. So I've got this library of, like, where the sound of what I do lives, basically, and evolves as I save more stuff. And what I've done is just dragged and dropped the whole drum machine group into here. And you can see I've already saved it, so I'm not going to save this. So I'll just escape out of it. But I can basically grab the entire drum machine channel from this ALS file, which is a live session in and of itself, and we can just drag it and drop it in. So if I do that now, that should load up with another instance, and there you go. There's a whole other instance of drum machine with all of the outputs already, you know, completely, you know, assigned, and it's ready for you to do whatever you need to do with it. So again, even though that looks quite complex, and it is like an initial setup of getting a multi-channel plugin like this working. The payoff comes from being able to just drag it and drop it in the next time you do it. And you've got an entire, you know, routine already done. And you can just get on with being creative, which is really, really cool. So that being said, what I'm going to do for now, uh, as we finish up here, I'm going to dial through a couple more of the presets on Drum Machine. And then what we'll do is before we move into pigments for five minutes or so, we will, with Hexel, we will just look at some of the sounds available in the actual, you know, sample packs we've got here for 303 Day. And, uh, you know, as we are, you know, talking about this, if you're liking what you're seeing, do us a favor. I'm going to do that YouTube thing. Very sorry. Hit the like button, you know, smash the bell, hit the subscribe button, whichever order you kids do it in. You know, give us give us all that love so you know the next time that we do a live stream, maybe it's with me, maybe I've outstayed me welcome, maybe they don't like me anymore, who knows? Tune in next time, but then if you're notified, you know to tune in, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to move and we're going to put another drum machine in here. And I'm going to do it from the plugins. I'm going to do it from here. And uh, I'm going to just drop this in and we're going to mute this for now. So we're going to go through some of the other kits that are available in this Techno Bundle because they are very, very, very good indeed. So we can go here. As you can see, you can add a location. So I've just added an ADSR folder. And from here, we can go into the bank. And again, what I used was the Dub Techno, the Dub Techno kit here. And there's some really, really nice ones. So the, the Progressive Techno kit is very cool. That will load up now. That's done and dusted. So let's uh, just put a little solo on there. And we should be able to... There we go. Very nice. And we've got really great patterns in this one. I considered this for the live stream, actually. It was very reminiscent of something like Joey Beltram Energy Flash. You know, I can just hear that like ba dum bom 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 in the background. I will not do any more impressions of sound effects. Don't worry. So anyway, we've got again minimal techno stuff. The Detroit one is particularly nice. We've got to say it. So that lovely groove that you expect from like Kevin Saunderson or Off Day One. Really cool. And 
all right, so I'm playing most of these faster than what they say, like 124 to 130. But as I say, it's Friday, who cares? So, you know, you've got these really, really beautiful kits. And I, I just found them really inspiring, like right from the off. Just great stuff. Really, really great. You know, the Berlin one is nice as well because it does have that kind of like slightly big iron feel. <laughs> And then we've got these other kits as part of the 303 day promotion, which you know, you've got Acid House, Acid Techno. I mean, really, we should do stuff like main stage techno, shouldn't we? 132, finally, a kit that's faster than I am on a Friday. I feel, uh, feel a bit behind now. Really cool. And we're heading more into like sort of drum code territory, right? And again, I've not put any processing on this on the channel at all. It's just a completely straight new instance. So this is how it sounds like completely out of the box. Really, really impressed. So you've got like peak time techno as well. So we'll listen to this before we move on to looking at Hexel and pigments. really beautifully put together sounds and again really really inspiring to actually like take elements of the different kits and make your own custom kits and again now you're armed with that workflow inspiration fast iteration is not far away for you really it's really really great 